All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back and ready to cast some more StarCraft. Now here, spawning on the bottom left for our next series, it'll, uh, it will be Team of Sleep, the Sheepdog, and his opponent will be the Purple Terran spawning on the top right on Bloody Ridge. It will be Insaning Without Limits, Fat Man here. Not fat, but fap. P, as with pony, pizza, plaster. Um. It all starts with P. Penis. Puppy. Person. Not 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 B is in like bed. Or can't I actually I, I love how I actually can't remember thing on anything on spot, but you get what I'm saying. It starts with a P. Or ends with a P. Fap. Fap. Starting with an F. As in family. F. Or like an F in starting with phone. No, that's PH. No, damn it. Never mind. I didn't say that. No. Alright, so it's gonna be a, a Terran versus Zerg here, so I mean, what can we expect? I Again, literally, generally speaking, I really don't know anything. I I, I s Fat Man seems familiar, like a familiar name, but like overall I, I Nothing to indicate any kind of play style. We're just gonna have to go by the books. We're gonna have to see what they do. Let's see what they don't do. Let's see what they do well. Let's see what they don't do well. Pretty much all that kind of fun stuff. All right. So it looks like we have 12 hatch. Uh, so it looks like pool before uh, pool before hatch build. We're gonna put a little bit more aggression on. On a map like this, uh, I mean that can be that is to be expected because of the same. It's a it's a level. Of, a same level map, so aggression can be favored. The only downside for Zerg is that they have no really, really fast Zerg, um, like Zerg missile attackers. So like, you need to get gas for that, and it uh, takes a little bit longer. And it, it, it just overall, just not a smart thing to to rush Hydra against Terran because they normally have either a lot of Marines out, which do fairly good against Hydras, or they have a tank out by the time so generally speaking uh, and, and it looks like bio will be the route here um, it looks like a two fat a, a two barracks um, into expand um, you know this is what I do a lot when I'm Terran um, I prefer to do this kind of style just because I like to have a little bit more units on the field downside of this play style is that it's very vulnerable to attacking player because this generally two barracks before and they kind of expand isn't really enough to pressure an opponent um or like do a lot of damage i mean yeah, yeah you can pressure but a lot of time even if you have two barracks and you pressure that you, you end up just dying anyway because there's just enough lings out there literally it's like one if you have one ling to one marine you tend to win as a third player in small numbers like maybe five or six marines maybe um you know, that's when you probably want to start bumping up the link counts. But still, like, you're gonna have, like, at least eight links on the field anyway, and they don't want you to get sniped off anyway. And even, even if they don't, even even if you, even if the link spot it, that, that's just good enough for them anyway, because they know how to defend. It looks like three edge melees will be the course of action again. And from our players from, uh, last series, May could learn something very, uh, awesome about this build order, as, uh, they actually, yeah, they're gonna get their timings up probably a lot faster. Um... But I'm not gonna go get nitty gritty about it. Um, the guy's spamming like no other tomorrow. And the funny thing is, like, I never see that ring around the, the, like the person selecting anything like after like the first three minutes of the game. Like, I actually don't know. Like, alright, so these links are obviously selected, but now they're not. And I'm, I want to know. I want to know what he's selecting, man. I want to know. Well. And the other thing, though, about the uh, the thing I like about this again, like you can pressure with it. Um, well, it doesn't look like he's into a two fact uh, or two sorry two uh, two barracks into expand. It, it more looks like you know stim timing. <laughs> um, I'm not quite sure if he already has stim. No, he he has yet to research it. So uh, yeah. So we we we'll, we shall see in in that regard, but. Yeah, I'll be interested. I, 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 I definitely. Oh, so, this is peculiar. I mean, do you necessarily need the medics? 
to expand my purpose is I don't but then again I'm D minus or E so and this is why I don't play Brood War because I suck at it but still I, I, I'm a semi decent caster at it let's just, just put it that way but yeah it looks like he's just gonna be gearing him I mean it does look like he's gonna want to deal some pressure here so it's gonna do like a two barracks with stim timing um, I mean, it's, a, it's definitely a strong timing. I mean, Zerg sometimes have difficulty with it. One sunk, you need about four, um, tends to be like a really, really safe number. You could try to get away with three, but on a narrow choke point like this one, where Lings are gonna be really, really annoying to get surrounded on, but we shall see. It looks like he's gonna get a little greedy. Um, and not try to produce his money, as I'm not seeing any drones being pulled over to really make uh, sunkins, but, uh, or, or creep colonies. Um, but here we go. Uh, the pressure's gonna be commencing right here. Now, will it be able to send this off? Now, remember, though, uh, that's a lot of links, though, and it looks like they this uh, bush will get cleaned up, though. Uh, that was, like, a really, really nice arc. Nice splitting of the... Or, nice AI pathing. Nice. Arby manually controlled it. Epic. Awesome. But the way that just spread around them... Um, Marines really weren't careful. Uh, you kind of want to stay against a wall. Um, medics in first. Optimately. Optimally. Um... So that push was a lot weaker, but now we have a counter push here, and shh, uh, Fatman's in trouble. Um, I guess the fire right in there, um, but, uh, you know, poking in and out with those links is definitely not going to help. Uh, reducing those numbers is definitely going to help out the tower, not help out the Zerg in a favorable position here. So, um, 23 SCVs to 19 drones, um, yeah, pretty standard. Um, I mean, at, at, at this point, especially when he wanted to commit to a, a, a lot of Ling, Counter, uh, counter push. That is very unsimilar as he probably should be ahead in harvesters now. Uh, yep, yeah, but ahead by two now, 26 to 24. Um, now, does he continue on doing that? Probably not. He's probably going to eventually take off a third base, which he's doing, and probably start teching. Um, all right, so he has, he has fire out. Um, Mut Mutilus, well, this is the interesting thing. He has fire out, but he actually hasn't done anything with it. Um, um, you know, again, you, you opt, I mean, generally speaking, a, a Zerg player will go for the, that, that three hatch spire timing, uh, three hatch speedless, um, but tends to be a little bit more on against Terran, uh, here, uh, I feel like that's kind of like a fallback, a fallback method, um, he has spire in case he needs to switch to Meatalisks, you know, like, uh, what, uh, Frost and, you know, a, a, way, a while back, you know, the reason why he plays, uh, you know, uh, Terra, uh, blah, blah, blah. Zerg is the the way you can quickly, uh, you know, switch your tech pass. Uh, it looks like this drone shall die and did force cancel on the third. Um, in a scenario like this, you may just want to go Mutalisks, um, but he's getting a Lurker tech. But again, like I was saying, though, Frost likes the ability to go, like, in and out of tech pass really easily. Because, I mean, as Terran, if you want to go air, you have to put down, like, four more production facilities to make it worthwhile. Zerg, you already have your production, just put down a tech building and you're good to go. Uh, so generally speaking, it's it, it's harder for Toss and Terran um, as it is for Pro uh, as for Zerg. So, so he does have that option if he ever needs to do some like mid-game transition. Um, now, do I think he should tech switch to Eidos? I think he absolutely should because his well, his main in this own right though, it's like. Again, like, I could be completely overanalyzing this to the point where I'm just sounding stupid, but... In a way, he's kind of, like, made this fire worth it, worth it in his own right, because he's actually, you know, forced out at least four turrets, if not more. Uh, I think he probably has, like, five in the main base somewhere, but... He he, he did force out, I mean, a bit... A, a reaction from the Terran. I mean, did the Terran actually inspire? We'll never know. Um, as the... In, <laughs> the 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 in-game vision of Terran is, or of a player in Brood War in the replay editor, replay playbacker, is just terrible. It's only beneficial if you actually watch the whole replay in someone's point of view. And, like, yeah, that's actually looking a little bit more better with, um, with that new, uh, plugin now. Um, it's like POV something or other. I, I forget what it is. It's, it's some new plugin. It, it's like you need the plugin to act. Oh, wow. Um, but lurkers should be able to push this back though. That's a lot of lurkers, FYI. That's like at least six. 
Uh, he's gonna go for it. Um, trying to get the best spread as he can, but he's still coming up with units quite a bit. Uh, Val's not cost effective in any way for Fat Man. I mean, he cleaned up a couple of the lurkers, but there's still two, three remaining. Um, there's still a healthy amount of lings, there's a healthy amount of lurkers still, and Fat Man, where is your, your, uh, side vessels out, man? You are j he's just getting seed checked, just getting a starport. Um, now, my, p now, my opinion on what she, well, what uh, Fat Man's doing right now is a little odd because he again like he has comm set available so he should be able to scan and realize like well he has no meatless out on the field like this tab will even tell you there's not a single meatless out on the field the only airborne unit that Zerk has is like like 18 or like 10 overlords right now no se 8 excuse me no, se no 7 sorry um Actually, how many does he have? Uh, I'm not actually interested. He has nine. I was completely wrong. <laughs> but still. Um, you know, uh... And, I mean, he's kind of, like, making more missile starts than he needs to. His, the, the amount of barracks he has... I just feel like the tech has been, like, really delayed. Um, and I feel like he wouldn't have lost that main bio army that he lost to those lurkers. You know, from multiple reasons. One, each probably should have chosen more favorable engagement for him. And number two, if he had a radiate plus detection, it'd be a lot easier to engage well, because um, because you wouldn't have to switch, you wouldn't have to swap between hockeys and be like, all right, I need to scan now and then go back to my marines. But we're having a big push coming over here. But this is not looking good for for uh, sheepdog right here. But I may take that back though. It looks like all the, all that's left is the bunker. There are there are RC in the back though, so these lurkers will have. Oh, those died a painful death. Those marines. I don't, I don't see these lurkers going up much further ex um, without any defiler or link support, or meatless support for that matter. Um, I said just waiting on the queen's nest, so he's gonna eventually take it to hive. Uh, a little bit, a little, a little delayed, but you know, fairly standard timing for the hive time coming down. I, I normally like think 12 minutes for hive, uh, for pretty much just generally as zerg anyway. Now, um, I actually didn't realize this. Tanks actually have just unseed, actually outrange lurkers. Didn't know that. Um, that's cool, though. And they just have like this random bio for it, just chilling over here. That's like he maybe just be waiting for the opportunity to come and engage. Uh, there, but there's a healthy amount of. Oh, excuse me. So I'm just swapping my position here on my little awesome chair. Uh, but that is a pretty powerful force. Let's be honest here. That is. 34 links and uh, nearly a dozen lurkers. Um, and quite honestly, well, actually, Terry actually has a higher spike count, which I don't even understand. 33 Marines, 11 Medics to 4 Tanks at one side. So, well, I mean, with proper siege, I mean, if these are kind of position here, uh, Scourge did not connect. He's going to try to siege or not going to siege. Um, but it looks like these lurkers sh uh, cleaned up like every single Marine left on the field. Um, yeah, he's actually pushing his back up with just pure lurker at this point, which is somewhat surprising. But our right, defense matrix should be able to clear clear this up now. Um, or at least some of them. Uh, you will, yeah. Well, this is really sucky for uh, for Fatman right here. He's like, well, I I really don't agree what he's actually do doing right now because well, number one, this Ling support back back at home. He just wasted probably at least five or six marines right there. What he should have done, he should have waited for this uh, for more science vessels to irradiate those, get tanks, siege, kill off the rest of the lurkers, and make sure that these lurkers don't get in the mineral line. Hey, but at least at least these turrets are actually serving as as static as static um uh st static um oh shit what are they called um. Detection, static, static detection, but there's probably, there's already a side missile. Now, the one thing that, that Fatman's gonna have to start worrying about is this main base is getting fairly, uh, really, really low on minerals. How is he gonna take his third base? Um, you know, a lot of times switch there. That, this is when, I, I, I would safely say, this is the point in the game where Zerg has the greatest potential of winning this game. As long as they can continue to trade trade armies, that they're happy with that, because they have three bases to mine off. As long as they continue to trade, as uh, you know, cost effectively to a certain extent, and keep on denying this third base, 
he should be golden to take this game. Uh, he meaning sheep man or sheep sheep dog. But again, it's gonna have to go down to the cost effective trade. I mean, lurker Ling lurker is good, but the further this game progresses, the more anti lurker Ling comes up by Terran. Because generally speaking, you know, lurker Ling like really really hard counters bio. But bio could actually still be plausible or even effective, um, rather, in this matchup because with proper micro, you know, you could you could try to minimal minimize the, the splash damage by lurkers, um, stuff like that. But I mean, tanks outrange lurkers even when they're not on siege. They do a crap ton of DPS. Size of their mobile detection, they irradiate, and they have no damage done to them. And Hydra just sucky, so there's really no anti-air except for uh, scourge, and then. Alright, so he has ultras out though, so this push is going to be really, really annoying, but at the same time, he's expanding behind this. He's taking that, that's 2 o'clock, or 3 o'clock, excuse me. Uh, so he's transferring SCVs, being cool, phasing through some buildings. He should have a radiate done, yes he does. Uh, that's a lot of marines though, and uh, is Fabian going to take this game? Whoa! That was unexpected, um... And again, guys, I I just I just realized I I mean I I literally thought cold hardly that we were actually we were going to see like literally I I, I literally thought Sheepdog was in the best position as they could have been, you know, trade effectively. I guess that like last engagements really weren't that great. But yeah, they, they, you know, they didn't cost, I mean, again, like, like I said, you have to trade cost effectively for, to the extent where Zerg is most powerful. Now, think about it this way. If that push failed, we would have seen a flip side. We would have seen Fat Man GGing really quickly. So that's a nice victory for um, Fat Man right there and Insanity Without Limits. Um, fantastic for them. Um, I'm a little puzzled how that worked out, but hey, hey it happens. Um, but again, I, I just want to point out, though, that I don't actually see the end of the replay. It actually seemed like really coincidental this happened. But I said, is he going to take this game, I'm like, and I end quote, and then the game, and then I saw GG. I, I, that wasn't like I saw like the last second of the game replay, but I just want to clarify, I do not put spoilers in here. Um, but I just got it on the mark right there, and I just saw like, oh shit, that's like 30 Marines just doing stimming, and there's no counter to them. And... I, I'm genuinely surprised. Um, I would have thought Fat Man was going to lose just because of his, his delayed tech. But I think, you know, what ended up want, winning him the game was those cost-effective battles. You know, again, you know, Zerg wants to have cost-effective battles against Terran till they're pretty much they want to starve off the t starve off the Terran off the T base because you can't really you can't really go into like a choke point as Zerg. It just doesn't work well. Or is really any race, but you can't really. It's hard to bust down like a natural choke point as there is. It's just not easy, especially against Terran where they could siege up and turtle. Um, so generally speaking, you kind of just sit out their base, take expanse, and then try to starve them out. Here, though, what we saw was just. It was bizarre. It was um, you know, very cost-effective you know trades, but I guess there was just his marine control was good enough. I didn't see it, but his marine control was good enough to, you know, deal with the lurkers effectively enough to get up a mass mass amount of, of marines and get his tank uh, numbers high enough to kill off the rest of the lurkers. And, that. and you know the other thing though, I think I think I think another thing when I'm, the more I'm thinking about this, I feel that Zerg he, he, he was doing it good, was doing good, but maybe. I'm thinking this all wrong. Maybe Zerg was actually producing all of their resources on the same central army that they kept on trading, but they didn't take more expansion. I think that's the main the main issue. I think Zerg needed a fourth base. I think if they were, I think if Sheepdog was able to squeeze in a fourth base right there, I think this game would have looked a lot different and it would have been a lot more favorable to. Sir, because what they were doing is, I liked this place off from Sheepdog. I liked it. I liked the aggressive Zerg, but I just don't think they had enough either a production or b the resources to do, continue on with this. And I think if they cut off, I think if you played a little defensive for maybe about two to three minutes, 
maybe five max, but that's kind of a long time in a 16-minute game. Just, you know, pull back a little bit, you know, let Terran recuperate a little bit, take your next base, get your map patrol again, or continue having your map patrol, just don't go into the choke point, lose your army. And then you can start reproducing way quicker, and you could potentially just outrun your opponent anyway, and still contain them. I feel like that's what Sheepdog could have done. I think that was just the, the misconception. I think, I think Sheepdog should have just taken a fourth base. If they did our fifth base, I don't know, but just pointing that out there. And his third base did get cancelled for quite some time, but still. I, that's that's pretty much what I'm saying. That that it was the end verdict was that, that fourth base not being up. Or fifth base. I don't quite remember, but oopsie. Do not mind that noise. Do not mind my uh mouse dropping. Alright. But guys, thanks for watching again. We really appreciate this at iCup TV because, well, if it weren't for you, we wouldn't be casting. We wouldn't be casting. But anyway, um, more specifically, I'm glad you're, I'm glad I'm back. I'm glad I got a a a setup that works. I'll probably I'm probably be done for the night. I'm gonna try to do some other stuff. Um, as I'm actually getting slightly better, I'm getting back into console gaming a little bit more. Um, cause I I I I, I found out personally. That, sorry, this is just like an afterthought. You could, you could just turn off the video. But I think, on just a personal level here, that I suck at StarCraft. I just absolutely suck. And it's actually interesting. Thing. I was talking to my friend the other day, right? And I can't tell you. I, I was like, dude, I like, I prefer watching and casting StarCraft than actually playing it. I, I. I don't know why. It's Brood War StarCraft 2. I just love StarCraft in general. And I'll play custom games. I'll do all that fun. I'll play StarCraft, you know, still, continuously. But I don't think I can do it at a competitive level. I, 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 I actually just do not have the fundamental skills to actually continue on with that. That's why I'm here. That's why I spend all my time casting. Um, and playing Halo Reach. Halo Reach, I'm actually, I'm actually pretty good at competitive level. But you're not here for Halo Reach. You're not here for Xbox. You're here for StarCraft. You want another game. I'll give it to you in a day or two. So, guys, I mean, you have plenty of content to watch. I'd probably cast it maybe an hour and a half, hour of casting. Should be enough to content your, uh, content your brood war hearts for the next two or three days. Especially with all the other content, content out there, shimmy, whatever. I haven't been checking the... Uh, Team Liquid brood war posting has been a little slow lately. Um, a lot of pro league stuff been going on. You know, the finals are coming up or are over, I forget. And a lot of talk of being like, oh, Brood War's done forever, and kill it off, or something like that. And I'm like, whatever. Um, but that's my own personal opinion. I don't really care much for Pro League. Um, I'm a little different like that. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching iCup TV. Fitz signing out here. Fitz, with the new rig, with the new setup. Have a nice day, guys. Peace. And again, thanks for watching. Show some love by uh, liking, subscribing, and commenting. Uh, I I love to see those comments. It makes me feel heard, awesome inside. I don't normally reply to them, but uh, sometimes I will. Guys, thanks for watching and peace, guys.